good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm honored to be here, and if anyone's asleep, I guarantee you, you may fall asleep to what I have to say, but you surely won't sleep with my granddaughters helping me with my PowerPoint presentation. Um, she's 13 years old, and she said, Papa, it needs some brightening up from what you had before. I, um, let me ask a show of hands if I could see how many uh, doctors in the room are doing vitamin D testing in their office. Uh, I'm going to be preaching to the choir. <laughs> you know, how many have found that a large percentage of their patients are vitamin D deficient? Well, it just it, it's the same findings that we've had in our practice. It's just incredible. I I, I didn't even really know about this. Um, a year ago, year and a half ago, we've always recommended vitamin D3. We've never recommended vitamin D2. We've always recommended about a thousand a day, just empirically, without really having a lot of evidence, except feeling that most probably, if the um, Food and Drug Administration puts out an RDA, it's most probably one half to one third of what everyone should be taking. You know, and um, uh, let me see if I have this thing here working. We go forward here. Next, um, I'm, I'm going to present a few studies, and, and I'm just really the old-time general practitioner. I'm not a research scientist. Um, I love talking. I love talking to lots of doctors, and I'm going to go through lots of the studies that I've learned. What I've learned from talking to other doctors, because what I found amazing as I talked to all the doctors in the hall today and in the hallways and in the conference room, uh, well, shouldn't be talking in the uh, conferences, you know, that um, uh, there's a, a, most doctors in this room themselves are taking about 10,000 units of vitamin D3 a day. I found that interesting. That's what I take. I recommend 5,000 to my patients. But if you go back to the beginning of 2008, I recommended 2,000. That seemed to be based on the latest scientific studies. But as I've talked to Dr. Hollis, Dr. Hollick, Dr. Grant, Dr. Garland, some of the real uh, big uh, wigs in vitamin D research, it seems that every few months they're increasing their uh, recommendations. And it's all based on the 25-hydroxy-D test, you know, which is kind of really impressive that uh, we saw such a large showing of hands of doctors who, in spite of giving their, their patients vitamin D, or surely when they started before they got vitamin D3, found that their patients were sub severely deficient. You know, I wrote a paper on this, and um, I have a copy of the paper here. It was called More Than Just Rickets. And it was very interesting because I'm looking at my first reference, and the first article was here. Recent scientific studies have found that the level of vitamin D in most people, while adequate to protect against rickets, is not high enough to lower the probability of other medical conditions that may be caused by insufficient amounts of vitamin D. And I, when I looked at the reference, I said, oh my God, this is a doctor that I met in San Diego three months ago. It was his paper, Dr. Gary Scherfelberg from Canada. Um, the Canadians are so far ahead of us because they get a whole lot less vitamin D than we do. And there's an organization called Grassroots Health, and it's headed up by Carol Bagley. And Carol is a... Um, a breast cancer survivor. She's in her late 60s. And what Carol uh, did was she started when she was, she was in her early 60s when she came down with breast cancer and she said, you know, I'm not going to treat it the way everybody else does. I'm a young, active, healthy person. And she started reading a little bit about vitamin D. And what she did was she went around the country talking to all the experts and found out that a a treatment for cancer is vitamin D, a very good treatment. She then put together symposiums in San Diego, and this chart, which you can get, a, you can come by, I have many of them, uh, is one that um, is maybe one of the most impressive pieces of work. It looks at about 30 or 35 different studies, and it's an epidemiologic study, which I really like. It's my background is statistics and epidemiology. And if you take a look at the dark black line, that's about 25 nanograms per ml. And based on that, you can see that to the left of the line is uh, rickets. And rickets, 
and I, I can barely read this, um, uh, it's somewhere around a, uh, 18 or so or 16 nanograms is enough to really take care of rickets. And that's how the Food and Drug Administration made their recommendation as to what the daily allowance for vitamin D should be. And they recommended milk, milk, I mean, not a very good source, um, but they fortified the milk, and milk has about... Uh, I'm trying to remember now, it's about 100 units per 8-ounce glass. But that's enough to take care of rickets. But they really had no clue as to some of the other properties of vitamin D. And it stems from the fact that vitamin D is not a vitamin. I'm sure many of you in this room know it's a hormone. You know, and, and the funniest thing is I didn't even really know what the definition of a hormone was. So I had to go back to my books and go back to my reading and realize the difference between a hormone and a vitamin is a vitamin is something that that's ingested, which has an effect on ingestion. And a hormone is something that's produced in one part of the body to have an effect on another part of the body, like um, insulin produced in the pancreas, thyroid produced in the thyroid, and vitamin D is the sunshine vitamin. And as we all know, it comes when the sun um, bakes our skin. Uh, it uh, changes the cholesterol. The cholesterol, go, that molecule goes through the liver and uh, becomes uh, the 25-hydroxy-D or the 125-hydroxy, uh, uh, you know. Uh, and, um, and, and so as a hormone, we also all of us were taught in medical school that 2,000 approximately was the upper limit of toxicity. There's no evidence that whatsoever. And I have some very, very good references and some very good case histories that I'll bring and talk about that. But let's look at this chart for just a minute or two. Um, if you take a look at um, uh, all cancers combined, 